Rwanda, a beautiful country with a troubled past. Following the 1994 genocide, thousands are in prison serving sentences or awaiting trial. Yet with the prisons designed for far fewer inmates, the infrastructure is under great pressure. Prisons are like uh, highly concentrated uh, towns. You, you talk about uh, thousands of people in a very uh, small place. Uh, in the case of uh, Rwanda, talking about uh, surface per person, it doesn't make sense here. It's so ridiculously small and uh, problems of uh, sanitation are, are huge. Access to clean water, disposing of sewage and deforestation are some of the main problems. With some of Rwanda's prisons holding five times the intended number of inmates, it's not surprising that the original septic tanks and settling pools were unable to cope. The appearance and stench were just a facet of the problem. More serious was the danger to the environment from contamination of the watercourses and deforestation caused by the huge demand for fuel wood. Faced with these threats, the Kigali Institute of Science and Technology, KIST, developed a way to convert the human sewage to biogas, thus cleaning up the waste hygienically and creating a sustainable energy source. Natural fertilizer is a bonus byproduct. We can turn the human waste, which is polluting the environment, into usable gas, the biogas system, whereby they can use it for cooking. And we started with Chiangugu, where there was about 7,000 prisons. We have now covered seven prisons, and uh, we hope to cover all the prisons. Ania Kamaru was the engineer who designed the system. How the system works? You get uh, fresh material from the toilets and they go through uh, a drainage system and it has to enter the anaerobic system. Anaerobic system uh, is, uh, is an enclosure where you don't have air uh, because the bacteria which you produce gas, they don't like oxygen. Now, with the inoculation mechanism, you are mixing the old stock with the fresh material, which is the secret behind the success of this kind of technology. Once the biogas plants are up and running, they require little maintenance and should last for over 20 years. The biogas is used to power stoves and provide manure for crops. In the grounds of Siangugu, it's also being used for beautiful gardens. As you see, there's no smell at all. But I'll tell you, before, before the construction of this, the smell would, would go beyond our borders up to Congo. People, you see, would test the smell of the prison around here. So the villagers now, some leaders around, Sometimes they come here just to watch the view, the nice view behind you. Not only is the gas clean, free and a renewable energy source, it is reducing the pressure on wood for fuel. In the prisons where KIST has installed biogas, 60% less wood is used for fuel. Importantly, it is extremely transferable. You can do it at, uh, in schools, you can do it in hospitals, you can do it in a military establishment, you can do it in refugee camps where they use a lot of wood. And we also train our students. Now, this month, I've been told I'm free to go back to my village. KIST came here to build the biogas system, and I've studied and learned how to do it. Later, I will visit my friends at KIST to get work. We train other private people to cut out the same work. And uh, that way, we are, I think, able to save the environment, at the same time use the energy for their cooking and lighting. We need funds to generate more research. So we are very happy now that we are being considered to get a national award for the biogas usage and for biogas technology. To make the KISS biogas project sustainable, knowledge of the technology must be shared. Once individuals learn how to develop biogas plants, it's a viable option for private enterprise, and many plants using human and livestock waste can be used to produce this clean energy. Fantastic. <laughs>